Hello, family. This is Deborah with Black Education TV. Any of you who follow our ministry know that we have talked about demons and spirits and witchcraft and sorcery, things that have things that are taking place in the world through people. We talk about these things because it's very real. And for some, it, it invokes fear. You don't want to talk about it. You think that it's one of those subjects that need to be kind of spoon-fed. And I'm just going to be frank with you. Most people in the world today are dealing with some type of demonic activity. Some type of spirit that is not of Yah. Most people in the world. Okay. I would venture to say everyone is. Okay. Because even those of us who know what's going on and see what's going on. We are still dealing with these spirits. Because we need to know how to deal with these spirits. But for many it's a, one of those things where you're afraid and you, you kind of rather not deal with the subject. But let me tell you why that's dangerous. That's dangerous because... Spirits and demons do not disappear or do not go away because you don't know about them or because you don't understand them or how they work and how they move. They don't disappear. They, they're going to still continue to do what it is they do. This is why there are so many testimonies from people who have dealt with the demonic realm where I've had spirits trying to influence them or doing things and, you know, all of that. The testimonies are real and they are off the charts. If people in the world would collectively, from house to house, start to talk about their experiences, you would begin to see, those who have spiritual eyes would begin to see how the spirit world is dealing with everyone on every level. It's unfortunate that many don't know or don't understand how to decipher what is an evil spirit and what is a righteous spirit. Because not all spirits come in a form that is obvious to you or in a way that is obvious to you. As I stated before, some spirits come trying to be your friend. Or they come in a friendly way to where you wouldn't possibly associate them with evil if you're not a person who has spiritual eyes. If you're just a person who don't understand spiritual things and you feel a presence and it seems to be friendly, sometimes people actually uh, befriend these spirits because they don't understand what they are doing. This is why it behooves us to know and understand how the spirit world works. It gets in religious people. It gets in satanic people. It gets in uh, people in the workplace, professional jobs, um, laborious type jobs, wherever people are, whatever environment you may find yourself in, spirits are dealing with people on every level, in every way you can imagine. Demonic spirits. Manipulating spirits, controlling spirits, all kinds of spirits, deceptive spirits. And so if you are one of those who find yourself in fear of dealing with spirits, you, you probably already are. So... You need to figure out what to do with that fear because you're going to have to confront these issues. Because right now, let me tell you what's happening, what I see happening, what many others see happening. The spirit world has been stirred up tremendously. It has been stirred up tremendously to where we are starting to see more and more and more of the manifestation 
of demons and spirits in people. This is why when the scripture tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that, that scripture, come on now, come on. That scripture is not just telling you. See, a lot of people, I remember coming up in the Christian church. A lot of people would just think, see, see, um, demons, you, you just cast demons out and you finish with all of that stuff, you know? No. It's letting you know that there is a fight ensuing. It's letting you know that the fighting that we, that we deal with in the spiritual, even though it may manifest at times, through fleshly beings. It's letting us know that there are spiritual beings in high places, spiritual wickedness, and principalities and powers that we are dealing with. High level stuff. Some of it manifests through people. Some of it manifests through animals. Some manifest in areas. My husband talked about that um, in one of his teachings where he was saying that in certain regions of the world, certain regions of the country, certain cities, there are certain principalities that deal with those areas. That's why some things are more prevalent in one area than it is in another because there are certain demons and principalities that have been assigned to certain areas. And so you'll have a heavier concentration of a particular activity in a certain area. This is why understanding what is happening in this world, in the spirit world, in the spirit realm is very important. It even boils down to who you allow to come around your family. We cannot allow our human emotions to be in, in the way any longer. We know that we must love. But with that love, we've got to be careful. Because everyone that comes around you does not love you. You've got to understand that. Some people have a hard time even feeling anything for you. Despite how much love you give them or show them or feel for them, they don't have that same love for you. So you have to keep that in mind. So there are people that are operated by dark powers that will literally come around you, be in your presence and are allowing spirits and demons to speak to them and to work in operation against you. Understand what I'm saying, family. There are people who will literally come around you and are working against you or feel nothing for you because they are being controlled by spirits. There's a, a Christian minister named uh, Kevin Ewing. He's here on YouTube. Um, there was a sister who referred uh, this brother to me. Very powerful teachings. After we had shared uh, some of the... the um, messages from Destin Ministries because he also has a very powerful series dealing with witchcraft where he's talking about witchcraft and how it works in people. Very powerful series. In listening to both of these brothers, Destin Ministries and uh, Minister Kevin Ewing, uh, Stephen Darby is the name for the pastor of Death Destin Ministries and Kevin Ewing is the other fellow, but these brothers, both of them, have some very deep insight on the spirit world. And I would say to any of you, you just got to put that that uh, whole Christian thing out of your mind. Don't allow that to keep you from the truth. Because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of these so-called Hebrew Israelites don't know anything about spiritual warfare, how to deal with demons. 
how to even identify witchcraft and all of this kind of stuff. Many of them have no clue about those things. And this is why they're dealing in the natural. They have the zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. They may be able to quote the 613 laws to you, but in terms of dealing with the spirit world, they have no clue about that. And I'm not saying that's true about all of them, because there are some Hebrew Israelites, so-called Hebrew Israelites, who came out of Christianity and brought um, what they knew and their experiences with them. That That's the position my husband and I are in. We were Christians at um, some point in our lives. And we didn't throw everything out because we discovered who we are as a people in the flesh. We didn't throw out the gifts of the Ruach HaKadosh. You see, a lot of Hebrew Israelites encourage you to do that. They say that anything you received in Christianity is of the devil. And they don't, they don't make any separation of what they're talking about either. We've known Hebrew Israelites that have said speaking in tongues is of the devil. They don't believe that healing is taking place in this day and time. I mean, we've heard so much nonsense coming out of these religious groups. That's what I consider them to be. They're no different than any other religious group when you speak that type of rhetoric, which is clearly against the word. The Most High is still moving. He is still speaking. His sheep hear his voice and another they will not follow. I thank the Most High for the truth. I thank the Most High for those who can accept the truth, regardless to where it's coming from. Because if you sat back and tried to get everything from these Hebrew Israelite assemblies and camps, you would just die spiritually. Because most of them have no, spook, no type of spiritual food for your spirit whatsoever. Everything that they're going to give you is going to be in the natural. This is why they do the things that they do, because there's no fear of Yah. They don't, feel the, they don't feel the consequences or fear the consequences, should I say, of their actions. Got to step out of religion, family. A step into the truth because there is a war going on. A spiritual war. And if you don't put on the whole armor of Yah, you will not be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Don't fear these type of conversations don't fear the spirit world you owe it to yourself to know what's going on not to enter into it with fear but to know what's going on I remember when I was very young 12 years old as a matter of fact I remember how fearful I was of uh, spiritual things because at an early age I was introduced to some things that I saw I saw demons being casted out of people. I saw demons as they would um, rise up in people. I saw things and I experienced things too that brought an extreme amount of fear of the spirit realm to me as a young child. But I remember something that the Most High did to me, did for me should I say, I was so afraid of the dark. I was afraid of, you know, anything. There was um, a trauma that happened to me at a very young age when I can't remember how old, how what my age was, but I know I was under 10 when this particular thing happened. My grandmother had a very spooky house. Now, let me tell you something. There were some spirits in that house. I know this for a fact. And if any of my family ever hears this video, um, it is what it is. There are spirits that deal with people and deal and, and are in houses, okay? But I was so afraid in this house. And one thing that intensified that fear was I had some relatives that locked me in a basement. They were kids, okay? For them, it was just child's play. But they locked me in the basement. Tur they turned the light off first. Ran. They ran up the stairs. This is how it happened. They ran up the stairs. I was still in the basement. They ran up the stairs, turned the light out, and locked me in the basement. And they were saying Bloody Mary through the door. Now, my grandmother's basement stairs were really long and tall. And so I remember running up those stairs in the dark, banging on the door, screaming for my life. 
and they were on the other side of the door banging on the door too saying Bloody Mary laughing profusely that did something to me for a very long time I was afraid of the dark I was afraid of basements and because they were kids okay those are just things that kids do we were all kids but that affected me for a good portion of my life I remember at some point something happened I was left home alone we were still living with our parents at the time and I said I'm gonna face this fear I was I was in the house it was daylight and for some reason everybody was gone my mother my stepfather my sister my brother and it was rare that everyone in the house would be gone I was the only one at home and I was scared out of my wits that fear had taken a hold of me so bad to where I was literally sitting in torment in broad daylight and so even though I was young I heard the voice of the Most High say to me to tell me what to do and I had never ever heard anyone else say this before so this is why I know this was the Most High I was instructed to open the front door and to open the, the kitchen window which was at the back of the house and I was instructed to tell the spirits to leave get out of this house now I was a teenager and like I said I never heard anyone teach on this or do anything of the sort or say anything of the sort but I do remember this one thing there was a sister who went to our church we would go to her house and she had this um, plaque on her wall and it says something about the devil is laughing at you and it showed this um, creature rolling on the ground like holding his belly laughing ah, ha, 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 ha. that's what the image um, depicted and so I remember that day being in the in the house by myself I remember that image came into my mind and it's like it upset me that the devil was laughing at me and so when I opened up that front door in that back kitchen window and I did what the most I instructed me to do it's like my fear left it's like I just politely I didn't scream holler spit do none of that stuff that they do in the churches no hickamoshia nothing that nothing of the sort I just said, I command you to leave. And those spirits left. What I was able to do after that time was amazing to me. I was able to sleep in the basement of our house in complete darkness on the couch. There was a couch in the basement at that time. And so I slept in the basement on that couch. No lights on, because we weren't allowed to just keep lights on in the house, running up bills and stuff, you know. But I said, wow, the Most High delivered me from that fear. He delivered me by telling me what to do. Telling those spirits, by me telling those spirits what to do, I told those spirits to leave. So at a very young age, I began to see how things worked in the spirit realm. And then to, to hear the scripture that says, he gives us power to tread on serpents. And then to further hear how Solomon was commanding spirits and demons. And to hear all this, this, this word, this is why the word is so important to us. To hear all of the word that's telling us that we will have power and authority over demons. It brings your mind to a whole other place. They are not to be feared. They are not to be feared. Now You do have to understand what you are dealing with. If you don't know what you're doing, that's one thing. You do have to understand what you are doing. 
But when you have the power of Yah in you, Scripture says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is why it's important that we are filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. The Ruach HaKadosh is not just some good feeling that you experience. It's not just tears that flow. You need to be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh so that you can understand how to deal with demons, how to fight these demons. Notice um, those brothers that um, in the scripture, how they tried to deal with those, the, the, the man that had the legions, the demons. And he said, Peter, I know. He said, Yahusha, I know, I'm sorry. And Shaul or Paul, I know. But who are you? So, Yahusha, I know. And for those of you who are, who are Christian, it said Jesus in your, in your Bible. Jesus I know and Paul I know. Or Yahusha I know and Paul I know. But who are you? That was the demons speaking to them, basically saying that you're nothing. You have no power or authority over me. Because you don't have the spirit of Yah in you. This is why demons are able to torment so many people in the world because they don't have the spirit of Yah. They have the spirit of religion. And that's a whole other video I'm going to do one of these days if I remember. Talking about the difference in righteousness and religion. See, a lot of people hold their religion up as their righteousness. When religion has no place in righteousness. Scripture says that your righteousness is as filthy rags. And I'm going to say, I would venture to say that your righteousness is nothing more than your religion. The righteousness of Yah is what we need to strive for. Because his righteousness is totally different than ours. Many examples in scripture of his righteousness that some of us probably wouldn't even agree with. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out, family. I want you to look up the videos dealing with um, witchcraft demonic presences. One particular video that I like that um, Pastor Kevin Ewing did was the monitoring spirits. I have some stories that I can share dealing with monitoring spirits. Some definite stories that I can share. And many of you probably have similar stories. Like I said, some of us can see what's going on in the spirit world. Some of us are blind to it because we're so caught up in this flesh world. I don't despise the experiences that we've had because they've brought us to a different level of spiritual warfare. I thank Yah for the things that he has shown us and the things that he has confirmed to us through other people, such as Brother Kevin Ewing and the Brother at Destined Ministries. A lot of Hebrew Israelites can't even receive this type of truth coming from these brothers because they are so religious. And they think that their learning of the Torah is going to save them and deliver them out of these demonic attacks. No, it won't do a thing for you. Because many of them study the Torah and claim to live by it in its entirety. When that is a bald-faced lie, is impossible in the land of your captivity to completely adhere to Torah. Especially when there are things that we were only supposed to do in our land, according to Torah. I'm going to go ahead and end this video out, family. Just wanted to get into this subject again and encourage you to go and find out what is going on in the spirit world. And with that, I will say shalom.